morning, Central Christian Church, and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there, especially my mom back in Nebraska and my beautiful wife who's inside with our lovely babies. Um, I am very excited to uh, meet with you guys again this Sunday. Um, the sad thing is that we're not meeting in person, but it is very exciting that we do still get to meet to, uh, with each other. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today, is just that there's so much hope that we have uh, in Jesus, uh, even though the world around us does not have uh, the hope that we have. Um, something that's very encouraging to me, uh, I'm going to read to you about in Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts, sprinkled clean from an evil conscience in our bodies, washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another and love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. That is the thing that is so encouraging to me, that even uh, in this time when we are not able to meet together in person, we are so committed as a church family uh, to continue to meet together. It is such a habit for us that uh, we really find any way that we can to meet together and uh, meeting online is not ideal but it is better than not meeting together at all by a long shot and uh, that is something that is uh, so encouraging and hopeful for me um, and it makes me so happy to be part of this family uh, this church family and um, but the thing that really gives us hope as Christians is uh, said very clearly in John three sixteen and 17 uh, that God so loved his, this world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life uh, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Uh, and that, that is one of the most common verses uh, in the world for a reason. It's because it's so powerful. Uh, God sent his son into the world for us so that we do not have to uh, spend eternity uh, in separation from him. We get to spend eternity uh, in relationship with him. And that's what gives us hope that uh, a lot of the rest of the world does not have. Uh, we have hope that uh, this earth and the, uh, this, these bodies are temporary and that uh, when we die we get to spend eternity uh, with Jesus. And... Um, that we do not have to put our our hope in ourselves or in the government um, or in, even in the medical professionals to take care of us. So um, that is what I want to uh, encourage you guys in this week. Just um, every opportunity you have, just spread that hope to uh, the people that are around you. Uh, obviously stay socially distanced, but you have neighbors that you can talk to over the fences or through uh, the glass windows. Uh, I that's something. That's another thing that's so amazing is that I've heard so many, and I've experienced it myself, of people in our church family that have been uh, dropping off gifts on front porches, uh, having conversations through uh, glass windows, uh, just finding any way to take care of each other and be in community with each other. Uh, and I just encourage you to continue doing that and uh, spread it out to those who do not have the same hope that we have. Uh, because they need it uh, just as much as we do. Uh, and so as we gather uh, here as a family uh, in our own houses and as a church family uh, over the internet, uh, we are going, I'm going to read for you out of uh, 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 11, starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that is what we really have hope in, that Jesus died for us and that he is coming again. Uh, so, dear God, I thank you so much for uh, this day that we get to worship you as a family, as a church family. And uh, I thank you so much for the hope that you've given us by sending your son uh, to do the unthinkable, uh, to die on the cross so that we could be uh, in relationship with you for the rest of eternity. I just pray that you will uh, bless the rest of this time that we have together uh, and that you will um, continue to bless us and give us hope throughout the week as uh, this just drags on. And uh, I just pray uh, for each one of us that this is something that will bring us in closer relationship with you and I just pray that it will cause a revival in our country and in our world uh, to be to put our uh, hope and faith in you instead of the things of this world that cannot protect us in Jesus name I pray
This morning I get to share with you a little bit about Rafa International. Rafa International, also known as, or more commonly known as Rafa House, was started back in 2003. And what initially started off as a goal of restoring young women and children who were free from sex trafficking has expanded to over three countries now. They are in Haiti, Cambodia, and Thailand. And they are continuing to do that work of restoring women and children who have been freed from human trafficking. In addition to that, they have also expanded and have gone the route of trying to prevent that from taking place as well. And in highly margin marginalized areas, they have set up places where they are able to do education and after school program for kids to let them know um, of how to prevent themselves, how to protect themselves, and also let them know that they have an immense value, more than what they've probably ever known before because of who they are in Jesus Christ. They are one of our missionary partners. They are part of the ministry that takes place through Central Christian Church. And every week, your offering that you give, a portion of that goes to support our missionary partner, like Rafa International. If you want to know how to give to Central, it's pretty simple. You can go online to our website, cccrockford.org slash give, and you can give your offering that way. As always, you can mail it in to us at 6595 Guilford Road in Rockford, or you could also contact your bank and have it directly uh, wired over to us as well. Well, Rafa House, um, in Mother's Day, they had a message that they uh, put together from one of their founders that I would like to share with you today. And here's what it says. Rafa House International celebrates all the mothers who make our world such a hopeful place to live. Even in life's most challenging and difficult times, we all take delight in the sounds of a child's laughter ringing across the distant aisles of a grocery store or seeing a social media post of a baby in a high chair covered in spaghetti. These moments which allow us to pause and smile are brought to us by all the wonderful mothers out there. And for those children who have fallen through the cracks of our broken world, for those who have mothers who are unable to care for them, we celebrate the women who stand in the gap for our precious next generation. At Rafa International, these women are called house mothers. Day after day, they provide a loving care for the children and the girls that we serve. Girls who are deeply traumatized and often missing their own families. Our house mothers are trained in trauma-informed care, and they hold the hands of the broken-hearted children. They help pick up those broken pieces in order to restore hope for their future. These women, they are the true hands of justice in the most simple and basic form, love. I have watched our house mothers sit at the bedsides of sick children and hold them when their hearts are breaking. I've watched them wipe the sweat off of them as they are on the soccer field running. Or when they fall down on the grass and just belly laugh with them. These are the moments of organic, of organic restoration. To all the mothers out there, to all the foster mothers all over the world, and to all the women of Rafa International who are called mother by the girls that we serve. Maka, Mamen, May, we say a big thank you for the hope and healing that you work to provide each and every day. You are our heroes. For the moms who raised us up, gave us hope, and made us strong. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who had to figure out how to do this on their own. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost but never given up. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the working moms, the stay-home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For teaching us how to walk and how to make a difference. For the late night snuggles and the early morning pancakes. For sitting with us after our first breakup. For lifting us up when others put us down. 
for the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties, for the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. Thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you. We thank you.